Tonight's special guest is Ken Ring. Every year at about this time on The Beat Goes On, we invite Ken Ring to predict the weather for our summer holidays. And the reason that we do this is that every year at about this time, Ken releases his new Weather Almanac for the following year. The 2014 version is just around the corner, and tonight three lucky viewers can each win a copy. We welcome Ken Ring as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. It must be summertime because Ken Ring is in the studio. Must be summer coming up. It is. And every year without fail. Since, since Noah wanted to know about the weather forecast, we've been having Ken Ring on the program with his brand new Almanac 2014. Wow, 2014. It goes it's, quick, doesn't it? Gosh, when were we born? We're baby boomers. Just... Just I, not like that, hasn't it? I can remember, Gerard, you probably can too, when the only noise in the sky was from a flying boat <laughs> and you looked up, wow, a helicopter? No, yeah, yeah. you would never see a helicopter. Now, uh, we've got three viewers in New Zealand who do not know who King, uh, Ken Ring is. So um, who was Ken Ring? Just, to, just tell those three viewers, Ken. Okay, I'm a long-range forecaster, maybe the only one around, I don't know, but I'm the only one who writes a book like this, and um, yep. I work out the weather by the orbits of the moon and the um, regularity of the sunspots, uh, which provides the heat and evaporation rates, but it's mainly the orbits of the moon that determines the air tide, uh, along, which is parallel to the water tide, and the air tide determines the weather patterns, so it's a cyclic thing, it comes around about every 20-odd years. Um, mm. You know, we're looking now at uh, a kind of summer that we had about 20 years ago, 1994. People might remember that was a long, long summer. Auckland had a drought in that year, and uh, 1974, 75, another 20 years back, uh, similar kind of summer coming up now. So that's what I do. Ken, you're sitting there because uh, last year was a brilliant summer. It had to be the most brilliant summer we've had in a long time. And your predictweather.com, please, what's going to happen this year, Ken? This is the big one. Should we have a drum roll? <laughs> well, look, we had a drought last year, and um, uh, uh, for, uh, f sorry, for this year, we had a drought, and we did mention that six times in the um, uh, this year's book on page 23, uh, sorry, page 27, 62, 83, and 84, if anyone's got the book. Uh, but drought is not mentioned in this book. Uh, even though it's going to be a real hot summer, mm. uh, there's going to be heat waves, uh, but there is going to be enough rain to allay the talk of drought. So, for example, in January from the 11th to the 19th, that's going to be the first heat wave. Uh, although there will be hotter temperatures in the middle of December too, but they'll just be fleeting. Mm. So you're going to get this heat wave in, the, in, in uh, January here. Then February is just just about going to be a complete heat wave from start to finish wow. in terms of temperatures of 25 and upwards. And Christchurch, I'm expecting 30 and mm -hmm. above, uh, around about the 1st, the 12th and the 22nd. So, uh, But as I say, there will be rain to temper that. The, the um, uh, worse off in terms of farming are going to be Northland because it's going to be dry for the first five months, drier than average. But, you know, they're going to get good rain as well. Uh, and um, But uh, they could be in trouble in some of the places there that, that uh, dry out more. Uh, Marlborough is going to be dry in January. You know, a few places are going to, going to get it more severely. But, um, uh, yeah, we've just got to prepare for that. Uh, well, you, you look after um, some very important groups of people like the farmers for a yeah. kick-off. They need to know this, don't they? Because... Uh, big decisions have been made yeah. about, uh, is it going to be a drought this year? Should we buy feed, etc., etc.? Well, it, it's also people travelling, you know, mm, tourism. Yeah. And uh, in fact, from the 8th to the 22nd of de December is probably going to be the longest spell without rain. So if anybody can take holidays then, you know, that would be probably the best time, between the 8th and the 22nd. Uh, and that's for the whole country, really. Um, so... Um, uh, I'd recommend that because then you can be at home for when the severe heat comes and you're not going to be all you know, flopping about. So where are you going for your holidays, Ken? At Titarangi, where I live. <laughs> I live in a resort and I tell people I live there because the weather agrees with me. <laughs> so what's the weather for Titarangi this, uh, this summer, Ken? Oh, it's, it's <laughs> going to be much as, as I've um, uh, said, you know, the... Um, uh, in the North Island, January is going to be hotter than the South Island. The South Island is going to get rain in the middle of January. 
but uh, yeah, once we get through these hot parts, by the time March comes, it'll be all over. There'll be a couple of days over 25, but but the extremes will have gone, and there'll, there'll be rain, you know, good rain coming in. Now your phone must go constantly with people uh, planning weddings. I mean, a wedding, you just need a lovely day, don't you? Yeah. So. Um, well, hope, uh, a wedding is better on a grey day because the photographs come out better because yeah. there's not the glare from the sun. Yeah. So that's what they want. Oh, uh, I don't know what I'd take. I think I'd take a blue... Uh, even though the photographs yeah. aren't going to be that good, I think there's something about a wedding and a beautiful blue day as, as blue sure, skies. Sure, you want there. it to be perfect. Yeah. You, know, you want it to feel good. And again, we're finished with the weather now, but um, are you finished with that wonderful burst of celebrity you had about uh, a year ago when you um, you had the ire of the nation and you were on John Campbell's the Campbell's TV show and uh, you were the centre of attention and you had to actually leave home, didn't you? You you couldn't. The, the phone was just going berserk. Tell us about those days. Are they all over now? Well, the, the trouble was that I had tweeted in September that in six months' time there's going to be another big earthquake in Christchurch, yeah. and you've got to give a month either side because it's eighty percent accurate. Yeah. And of course there was, and uh, I tweeted a week beforehand that it was coming in a week. So. So, uh, yeah, the media went a bit crazy over that mm. uh, because the geologists are supposed to be able to say that. But then the geologists had decided not to say anything, even if they knew. So there was all sorts of structural strain going on, and I kind of became the target. So I went away completely from all the media then, which may have, may have been wise, maybe not, because they made up a lot of stuff about me. But, but yeah, there were threats. Uh, my family suffered more than me. It is over. I guess because the earthquakes were over, like we said they'd be. Um, they won't come again to Christchurch, but they will come again to central New Zealand um, in a couple of years' time. So maybe the furor will start again because people are going to ask me and I'm going to have to tell them. No, I want people to know that they heard it first on The Beat Goes On. So repeat that in a couple of years. You well, feel I won't be though, specific. I'm just be... going to say the potential is there uh, in using the same science as I used to to determine the date of the Christchurch one. Uh, the potential is there for central New Zealand, which means from Marlborough to Wairarapa, you know. But, could but be it's already weird. started, hasn't it? It's, uh, it's creeping up. Yeah. See, it's moving up country, like it's, you know, uh, it's north of Christchurch, but south of Wellington at the moment. But, but uh, that activity, it always has a cycle per place. Mm. And uh, the Christchurch cycle came around again in 2011. The previously it was 1994 uh, when there were even more earthquakes mm. in Christchurch, but nobody reported it because it was in Arthur's Pass, mm. 70 kilometres from the CBD. Nobody got killed. There's no cathedrals up there, mm. you know, and so it wasn't news. But, um, but it does come in jumps like that. And, yeah, Wellington is at risk. I can't really say any more than those mm. words because I don't want to scare people, but I do yeah. want to make people aware that there is a cycle to it. Look, there's not many people get what you had, and that is absolutely the whole country zeroes in on Ken Ring or a individual. Well, it, is, is it a frightening experience? Well, or? it was because the politicians even threatened me with uh, <laughs> accountability. So. I, I um, started my newsletter and there's now 9,000 people wow. who get a free newsletter every month uh, on up to updates including earthquake activity. So I'm able to put it into that. So people can register for that. Could we uh, could we talk about that now? If they want to register for your newsletter, predictweather.com. Uh, yeah, Look on yeah. the left, it says sign up for the newsletter and uh, yeah. it's all free, you know, and you get updated is. information for the month ahead. Be prepared. Yeah. You were obviously once a scout. <laughs> dip, 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 dip. <laughs> now, uh, also the book. That's How do we buy the book, uh, Ken? Uh, you can get it from my website. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a, um, uh, a back part of the website that handles all that, or from any good bookseller. Uh, Wood calls, take notes, you know, paper yeah. plus. They sell them. Yep. Honestly, the um, warehouse, they've got them. viewers, we will be giving three of these books away mm -hmm. before we end. Uh, I just wanted to have a quick uh, chat with um, uh, Ken about the fact that uh, you were once a magician. Yes. And we were ha having a brief discussion, weren't we, on the phone, Ken? And yep. uh, I said to you how impressed I was with yeah. Dynamo. Yep. Dynamo's really got to me and... Uh, you did, you did. And I said probably something quite foolish because you uh, said, no, that's not the case, Jared. I said that Dynamo does illusions and he does tricks, but there's about 20% of his tricks 
that seem to be above. He goes into another realm, another... Yep. And uh, Ken said, no, no, it's all tricks. Is that what you said, Ken? It's all tricks. Well, you know, I don't want to diss the guy. I mean, <laughs> he's um, making a career for himself and he's doing very well. And he's I doing good for Magic, for though, it. isn't he? And he's doing a service to Magic. People um, uh, are in, interested in the art and so they look at what, he's, what he does. But, you know, as James Randi said, if anybody claims that they're using um, supernatural powers, to perform stunts, then they're actually doing it the hard way, <laughs> because all magicians can duplicate anything that yeah. is claimed, you know, to be supernatural. So, I believe that when he looks in your eyes and he he can guess your pin number, mm. I can't think of any trick in the world that could allow him to to do that. Now, let's take uh, p people scoff and say, oh, they're actors or they're, they're using tr uh, camera tricks. Let's take those out of it because I don't believe they do. He does have the ability to look at your eyes and go, your pin number is 9416. How does he do that? Well, there's there's a whole art called, you know, mind reading. And, um, I mean, I used to do a little mind reading because I've got a little mind. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I could try a little thing with you yeah. now. I mean, he, these cards are called ESP cards, mm -hmm. and they're actually used for, you know, sort of uh, tests like this, you know for this kind of experiment, so I'll just mix them up and you can say when to stop if you like. Stop now. Stop. No, stop. Okay, now, I, I just want you, you to pick a card and I want to look and see which one it is. Okay, you've got that one? Okay, yeah. good. Now, look at it and memorize it and, yeah. and just put it back in into that yeah. stack. Can I show the audience which uh, one it is? Well, if you like. But no, you close your no, eyes. No, I'll close my eyes, yeah. Okay. I'll show the audience. It's that one there. Okay. Now I'll put it back in the pack and shuffle. Shuffle it, yep. Shuffle it to your heart's content. Now and You never saw it. No, I never saw it, but I, I did see it in my mind. And uh, I can tell you, for some reason, uh, Gerard, you picked the wavy lines one. And uh, was I right? Hmm. So... I don't know if I've established anything there, but uh, you know there there are ways of doing anything that you see any magician do. I mean, uh, one thing that that Dynamo actually does is he, he yes, I saw that one. I saw that one. He shows the audience a bolt. Yeah. Okay, and and he he seems to somehow make it go along and then yeah drop off. Now, if I could do that, Gerard, I'd be really pleased uh, because, you know, I, I, I could claim uh, similar powers to what he's got. <laughs> oh, Ken, there's nothing like a sceptic. <laughs> Ken, we're going to give three of these books away. We need a question. We need a wonderful the question. The question is, um, the orbit of what do I use to make most of my predictions? So easy, so easy. And it's a very good question. The orbit of the moon. That's we'll right. give everybody a... Uh, no, that's we'll giving them, them a, a real clue. clue. So if you could email jared at thebeatgoeson.co.nz and in the subject line, um, you could write uh, the moon. Mm -hmm. And also, what about a little note about how much you think Ken Ring's the greatest guy on the earth? Is, is that a good one? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll, it'll go into the big pot and we'll pull out three names. No, it'll be my pleasure. So, uh, Ken. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Still working out how you did that trick, so uh, I'll still be here next year trying to work it out. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Bye.